So the survey, for sure, 12 questions, because we wanted people to answer it, right? And we've got about 125 responses. Now, who responded? Well, an interesting mix. So we had some librarians, we had some records managers, and, and you'll see the, the, the backgrounds of these people crop up in some of the answers they gave us. We had some knowledge managers, we had some information architects, some IT people, some web people. So we had quite a, 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 a diverse mix of information type people with an interest in this taxonomy topic. Uh, and where did they come from? Well, over a third of them came from government. Right? So a very strong showing of public sector interest in this topic which slightly surprised us. We were surprised by the level of public sector response that we got. Um, I think that's partly because, this is me kind of putting my interpretation on it, people in the public sector care um, about information management because there are greater um, reg regulatory requirements on them to do so, which is one of the reasons why this conference is happening. Um, and then the other thing is, I suppose over the last century, a lot of information activity was actually nationalised. Right, so the public library network. I thought I might start off with a definition. Right, what is a taxonomy? Now, what was good was we could actually take an empirical approach to this. So we had a free text field in the survey, and we asked people what they meant by a taxonomy. And then we used some really sophisticated semantic software to drag out the results, which was basically me coding, it, coding the printout with a pen. So, what is a taxonomy? Well, it's something that classifies. Right? It's something that puts the information that you have into boxes so you can manage it better. Right? It's also, so that's, that's, what most, that's what the majority of people said, it's also for the hierarchical aspect to it. Right? Um, so you're trying to uh, order things in terms of their importance or their application. Right? And also, there's a controlled vocabulary aspect. All right? So it's about defining a particular language that you're going to use. Okay? Now some of the answers also talk, so that's like the attributes of what a taxonomy is, but I also discussed what it might be used for. Right? So they talk about browsing, search, retrieval, and also sense making. Right? Which you might also say is, is analysis. Okay? Well, you've got all your content, can your taxonomy actually help you map it and make sense of it? Right? Um, now, as I was going through that, um, I felt there was something lacking, right? And, and, and this is actually quite important for reasons we'll see later, but nobody seemed to be talking about, well, what's the end use of a taxonomy beyond informational aspects, right? So I suppose my question is, where's the business, baby? You know, are we using it to improve services to citizens? Are we using it to, to create um, extra revenue streams and so corporations? By the way, this was the most, this was the longest definition we got, the most, uh, the most thorough. And this was the shortest. And I just thought I'd better just throw in some examples of the different kinds of taxonomies that crop up. So, again, not so good for the people at the back. You've got the good old Dewey Decimal Classification System. I've got a bit of RDF for the, uh, the people that are into OWL uh, and, and the semantic web. Um, and also, uh, I'll insert just a little footnote, but what's, what's, what's been interesting to me, somebody that trained as a librarian 15 years ago, the primary way that I interacted with classification systems was through textual lists and hierarchies, right? And now, it's two-dimensional images, it's maps, it's networks. It's probably going to be three-dimensional things soon. I'm quite excited about that. Anybody else excited about that? Yes, the spatial data people at the back are excited about that. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so that was just kind of setting the scene. So then we said, um, well, does your organisation use a taxonomy? Now this is, a, this is an open survey on the web, right? So we're expecting a bias in terms of people that do. All right? Um, yeah, so in terms of our respondents, pretty good. Uh, maybe slightly under three quarters, using a taxonomy in some form, right? Um, often, or uh, yeah, basically over half with some degree of customization or development in-house, 
All right? This for us was interesting because that means that people have to know how to divert taxonomies if they're going to do this. All right? You can't just get it off the shelf or lots of people are choosing not to. Then we ask people, well, okay, so if you're using one, if you're using one off the shelf that you haven't necessarily developed yourself, what are you using? And this kind of brought up the, the different backgrounds that people had. Because the biggest circle here is Dewey, right? Who uses Dewey? Librarians, right? Then we had keyword AAA. Hands up here, who uses keyword AAA? Who uses keyword AAA? Records managers, right? It's uh, been developed by the State, Library, uh, um, by the State Records um, Department of New South Wales. Uh, then we had AGLS, which we heard about from Michael earlier on this afternoon. So, a whole bunch of classification systems that people are using. One thing that I want to repeat is that there are a, lot, is there are a plethora of standards and systems out there that seem to um, mesh together um, very imprecisely, if at all. Right? So, we're kind of dealing with a very unstandardised you know, world of standards. Um, and and how, we cope, how we cope with that is actually, I, I think, a, a major challenge over the next two or three years. We also thought, well, we're quite interested in software as well. So, so who uses software? Uh, not very many people, actually. <laughs> Only under a third. Uh, and the kinds of tools they use, so they use AKA, they use um, Maltese. So they, these, are, these are kind of standalone taxonomy tools that you use to manage the taxonomy or a thesaurus. The other kinds of tools that cropped up were things like Trim. Hands up here who's, who's encountered Trim. Yeah, it's all over the public sector. SharePoint, a few people. Objective. So either content management systems, that's what people were saying was a, a specialist kind of taxonomy software, or quite simple tools. I think what surprised me was the lack of some of the more sophisticated tools that are starting to come out now. I think the most sophisticated tool on the list is, is Pool Party, which is a, a tax tool out of Austria. Um, but even things like Open Calais, like Synaptica, like um, Smart Logic and Schema Logic, are not really being used in Australia. What was interesting about this to me was we almost had the opposite of the Lake Wobegon effect. You know, right? So um, only 8% of survey uh, of response said we think we're really good at our taxonomies, our taxonomy development, our taxonomy management inside our organisations. Okay? A lot of people said they thought they were quite rudimentary. And a fair few people thought they were kind of just typical, just under half. But I thought that was quite interesting. A reverse like one of the good things. Then we kind of asked about taxonomy maturity. How happy are you with your current taxonomy usage? How do you rate yourself? Right, there's, a, there's a thing called the Lake Wobegon effect. Have you come across that? So it's, it's from Garrison Keeler's books. Um, if you ask, uh, in Lake Wobegon, all the children are more attractive and talented than the average. Right? If you ask people how well they can drive, typically 90% of people say they can drive better than average. Right, which the statisticians in the room will know is impossible. So then we said, well, do you actually want to get better? Right? Um, about 20% said, nah, not really. We're kind of chugging along, we're quite happy. Um, a few people said, just under a third said, yes, and we're doing so. Right? Um, but what was interesting was this big portion of people in the middle who said, yes, we'd like to, but we don't actually have the resources. And then these questions, or these comments started popping up in the comments boxes. Uh, <laughs> yes, but the management don't understand taxonomy and can't communicate it well. So it's enforced and used badly by most. Yes, but there is little understanding of what it is at middle management level and therefore no commitment. Right? So there was a... a a desire on the part of these information professionals to improve their information governance, their usage of taxonomy, but a failure to get traction with their management in doing so. This genuinely surprised me. Right? So then we said, well, you know, we're talking about training here. Um, what sort of training do you need? Um, at number one was planning a taxonomy project, fair enough. But at number two was creating a business case. 
Right? So again, this recognition that we're not selling this stuff, we're not advocating this stuff as well as we could. We're not creating a sense of urgency and engagement inside our organisations around taxonomies, probably around metadata and around information governance. Opportunities, taxonomies, metadata, business focus and business framing. Even beyond information benefits, what are the business benefits behind doing this stuff? Right? Um, I would like us to, to take a more overtly human-centric design to our taxonomies um, and then to use software to automate the boring bits where we can. And increasingly software can automate more of those boring bits. Right? And to do so, we will need to draw on many different traditions. So library scientists. Semantic technologists, data analysis statisticians, and also people with a background in design thinking.